a working watch. And who the fuck are you? Hey, hey. <laughs> you guys at least had the decency to identify themselves. I'm Deputy Billings, and you, Deputy like Sheriff. I give a fuck. <laughs> Hey, what's going on? It's your boy Sintel with the Intel, and we are getting ready to watch episode six of Silo. Man, totally amazing, great show. We're a little bit past the halfway point. Don't worry if you need to catch some of the previous episodes. There'll be a link in the description. So without any further ado, let's get started. All right. <laughs> All my Silo heads, you ready? <sighs> Probably just going to get more questions, which is a great thing. I wonder what that tattoo means. Symbolism is always big in these kind of projects. There's that Fibonacci sequence again, but that's the stairwell going down to the silo. I keep calling it the Fibonacci sequence. I'm not sure if anybody corrected me with that. Did you gotta tell me now, cause I can't be walking in here with no dead body. Cut locks and light bulbs. Blood isn't my thing. Can you open it or not? Yeah, I'm trying, but mm -hmm. most of these keys aren't working. Where are you at? Maybe tomorrow we can come back and uh, uh, with the fickiness holiday. Is there another way into this place? Yeah, but Judge Meadows. Sheriff, sure. wait, wait, hey, are you wait, sure wait, you want to? Sheriff? Sure. Well, there's one way. Root for us. You have to take the kitchen. I'm going to check the bedroom. What are we looking for? We're looking for anything strange that might tell us why Trumbull killed Marge. Trumbull's sight. See how dedicated he was. Oh, he was a drawer too. I saw the picture. You going there yet? No. Anything in the front? Not yet. There's the Pez dispenser. What you got? Honestly, I don't know. But, uh... Hmm. We're gonna need a relics bag. That was yours. You wanna keep that? What, if I wanna risk going to prison or sent down to the mines for one of your strange toys? So no. You can be sent down to the mines. It's not just the garden. A really shitty map. I did everything else by myself, including throwing bacon at dogs and running like crazy. But for a roll of hey, dogs in the silo. They're just not oh. worth risking your life for, especially when you don't even know what they are. If these things aren't worth risking our lives for, why do they make it a risk to our lives to have them? An even better question. And I want to give it to you. There's got to be a clue on the watch. <laughs> he said it's everything. Crazy relics like these. George? are the key to answering the silo's George. biggest questions. Are, are, are you not gonna ask me what the silo's biggest question is? Why are we here? <laughs> Bill, but these days, even when you win the packed competition, it's Sims who gives you the pin. There's a competition for knowing the pact? I won it four times, more than anyone four else. <laughs> I really am looking forward to seeing behind the scenes. I'm willing to bet all that CG. The way some of the people were walking in the further, further background seemed kind of Robotic, she, she looking like she's about that business. There's those circles again connected. We saw uh, the big necklace of them during the uh, memorial service. I'd like to conduct a relics investigation as a way to identify she possible offenders like Trumbull before like, they have a chance to mm, There's that, that nonverbal communication again. And Sheriff Becker made me realize that Wilkins' death was one of them. That is why I'd like to open this investigation so that we can know those things that are not. She sidestepped that bad boy. Like the fact that your very close colleague, Douglas Trumbull, was a murderer. Sheriff Nichols. Judge. Hey, hey he He's slung fine, first. Man. He slung mud first. Let's wrap it up. I want to get home before I have to fight through a crowd. Why are you ill? You'll need a specialist with you at all times, creating a list, every offense, every relic, and the names of who has what. Yeah, of course. What's going on with you? A working watch. And who the fuck are you? Hey, hey. <laughs> guys at least had the decency to identify themselves. I'm Deputy Billings, and you Deputy like Sheriff. I give a fuck. <laughs> no, not on the forgiveness holiday. Bullshit. You don't arrest me now. You put my name on a list. Probably put together by judicial face over here. Judicial face? As a man who's had his family destroyed by this fucking bullshit. You got to pen, Mr. Billingsley. Who knew a Pez can dis dispenser could cause so much fuss? Hey, really lugging that dude in the wheelchair up those stairs. Cause I'm the one that keeps things running. Fixed it. She's a tinkerer. Something ignites in you and I can see it on your face and I don't see that on other people. 
And, hmm. you know, what, whatever that feeling is, when you feel it, I feel that too. It's infectious. How can you not? What I'm trying to say is I fixed your watch for selfish reasons because I really like the way that I feel when I make you feel the way that you do. That's a good way to put it. It was easy to fix once I made the right tools. You made the tools? Yeah. Juliet Nichols. Find a way or make one. Are the spectacular. Truly. Incredible. <laughs> Stop making me like this character more. Hey, kitty kitty. That's a big cat. That watch? Huh. You know it? Of course I do. Belongs to my boyfriend. Oh! Ha! Huh. There's a reveal for you. Miss Jackson, are you in possession of any relics? Last legal? time I saw him, that's where he was headed. Moving on to the next thing. Mm. The next person. Ooh. Oh. Oh, it's starting to get a little spicy up in here. George didn't do sanctioned relationships. Mm. And any fool would see he's not the type of guy you spend forever with. Wow. We just dig, dig, dig all these skeletons out this closet. Sure, I guess. But how does anyone know? You ask? She and her feelings. See, and ask if the item I now possess is an illegal possession. Seems like I'm making it easy for them. Did you see or hear from him after he went down to mechanical? He's starting to piece it together. Look, Sheriff, George went down to mechanical to explore what he called the big questions. That picture on the wall. Looks like a child made it. George and those relics cost me a lot. Mm. He lost his family, but he didn't mind isolating me from mine. He was good with words. Wow. Uh, thank you uh, for your time, Miss mm. Jackson. If you have any questions, we can I definitely- do. I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. Sims, George and I were friends. Beyond mm. this watch- Oh, beyond that. I never received anything from him. George is looking real sus. Man, the name of judicial search team members are strictly confidential. You know that. I'm in no way required to reveal that in- Ooh. That the artifact was a harmless curio and decided to take it home for himself? You want me to entertain a hypothetical? I'm not- Theoretically, it is possible. Yeah? Mm. Is it possible? Not did he do it, but is it possible? In your search, did you find anything to explain why Trumbull would want to murder Martins and Johns? Hmm. Not- Yet, I... No. As far as everybody knows, Morris and Johns died of heart issues brought on by walking the side. Remember, he's the guy, he's the thinker. Investigation might expose the truth and that could prove destabilized. Mm. I know not everyone believes this, but I've found that some mysteries are best left unsolved. Code for tread lightly. Shoot, maybe you and this George guy were perfect for each other. Ooh. Oh. You want honesty? Oh. I do. I do too. Your hands shake. You have flashes of pain. Sure. Under pressure, you clench your hands so tight. I'm surprised your fingers don't fall off. You have the syndrome. Wow. We don't know what the syndrome is. And according to the pact, you're in no way qualified to be in a position of authority. To have access to a firearm? To mm. detain criminals? To even be a deputy in this department? I thought he was giving a signal, but it was his hands shaking. Mmm. Syndrome. You need to be building allies. Lucas, you've never had a girlfriend, have you? Oh, tons. Yeah, <laughs> the way he said that. Oh, I'm there. See? There, see what? Smile, like my mom said. This is not with you. This is you know how hard it is to make her smile. Look at shooting that shot. Go ahead, Kobe. Mm. Well, a cafeteria worker on my level told me that uh, it was going to be cloudy this evening, so I... You came up anyway? Yeah, I came to see you. Oh, really? Wow, that's terrible. Oh, wow. Well. That is a good line. I didn't think it could worse, but you found a way. I thought it was a decent line. Oh, I'm curious about his family. Oh. oh, my goodness. The baby's got an adorable laugh. Finally trust you? Mm -mm. I don't think she's a trusting type. She'll come around. She should be honored to have you. They have a whole thing they have to go through. 
in order to get these tremors right. You know it doesn't work that way. Just because you have it doesn't mean she will. But I worry. I know. I would too. But right now, let's just worry about getting you fixed up so that you can get some sleep. She has very loving eyes. I can't imagine life in the silo if I was all by myself. Speaking of by themselves, why are we here? That part. How long have we been here? All of just life's questions. Hey, it's late. Yeah, it's so quiet. It's time to come home. What does that mean? So did you figure out what happened? No, so angry. give a fuck. See? Ugh. Turns out the person I was doing it for wasn't worth the trip, so. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, so did you leave here and go all the way up top for him, or because it was the right thing to do? Ooh. I mean, shit, the man's dead. He didn't ask you to go up there. Ooh. You could talk to me about time when you can't bring yourself to step out the door. When seconds have become years. Hmm. Fear did the same thing to me. Now that is a waste of time. You're welcome to come here and join me. You, you know where that's going to lead. Let go of whatever it is you're wrestling with. Yeah. And finish the job. Instead, so the job is done. That's why you need that homie, that person that can be your, your North Star to get you back on track. Well done. She drops gems. But the man who knows everything, he Ooh. comes at night. What? Who does she? What are you talking about? Turn the water faucet on. You give up everybody, not just George. And every, so every one knows. question I wouldn't answer, he threatened. Hey. Two people I loved. Two people I loved. Mm. Every name I gave that man was another day she didn't have to spend in the mines. So, yeah. I gave up the names of every relic dealer I knew. Dang. <laughs> George. He only cared about himself. Hey, George is dead because you gave up his name. He is dead because he didn't give up the hard drive. The fucking hard drive. She knew about it. Then he gave me something from his mother. The only thing he kept of hers. What was that? What did he give you? The watch. I, um, I'm sure the hard drive's been destroyed, so I don't think they're gonna disturb you anymore. Neither will I, so. Okay. They search and toss my place. They look under the mat, but they just toss the damn thing aside. What is that? It's passed down and hidden for generations. It's this before the rebellion? It's before the silo. Whoa. Before there was a reason to lie. Before the silo. Whew. When you see what you'll see, don't speak it out loud. Don't let them hear. This will get you killed. Oh, come on. Give us a snippet. Just a, just a taste. <laughs> just a little bit. Oh, this is so juicy. And it's only episode six. Amazing Adventures in Georgia. A, ch a children's book? Maybe. Could be. Gloria and George. Look at all the trees. I've probably never even seen that. <laughs> people in boats. Can you imagine? There might as well be people like flying for her. There's, hey, the Fibonacci. I've been saying it. <laughs> the golden ratio. I think that's another reason, another thing they call that. Look at that, beaches and ocean and sky. Somebody's watching. Who's watching on a modern monitor you have to wake him up wake him up it's the middle of the night i know but he has to see this now who, who is him way more modern way more sleek That was good. That was a good one. 
Oh my gosh, what 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 an ending! And it, and it makes me think like, what would it take in your world right now for you to have your mind like completely blown, like totally, absolutely blown? out of what you deem to be grounded in reality or whatever it is and imagine going through that like because if it, it there's an argument that we ourselves live in a very very small fishbowl based off of whatever the reality of everything it, of everything is and we just don't have access to see or know you know we're so limited by so many things by we're limited by our senses we're limited by we can't even see all of the frequencies of light and hear all of the sounds and tastes all of the tastes like we are so very limited so there's things that are going on and happening that we are just completely unaware of and i and i'm thinking i'm like what would it be like to be just all of a sudden aware of so much stuff way bigger and grander than anything you can that you can conceive and that is what she is feeling you know when you're seeing like oceans you know she freaked out over the water that was underneath the drill but to see like a vast ocean and animals in it and to even see an animal must be like seeing an alien you know to see all of these trees and all you're seeing is like these small little you know uh apple trees that, that are in orchards and 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 all of that and the names of these places these foreign names like all, all that stuff has got to be just just mind-blowing and shattering and here you've got somebody that's been passing this stuff down generation to generation to generation. this is only just like a couple hundred years you know like can you imagine the stuff that's going like okay i know we're off a bit of a tangent but let me say this real quick i, I was reading somewhere it was saying that like like record no, um human history as far as like human beings have been around for like two hundred thousand years right and like around that rough rough that that number i'm sure there's more of an exact number but anyways um the ability to write things down in recorded history has only been like a few thousand years old you know two three thousand four thousand years old if, if that so they were saying that there's like 90 over 90 percent of the existence of human being that has not been recorded that is a complete mystery like imagine like the things that may have been going on during that other you know 180 plus thousand years of stuff and imagine like you get this book and it opens up and you get to see what could have been who knows what what other animals that are now extinct or what other whatever anything you know i can't even wrap my brain about it so that is such a such a mind-blowing kind of thing uh to get back to just the, the the series as a as a whole you know once again it's done a it's done a very good job of of maintaining pace um, i know i'm a huge fan of that but getting to know like the meaning behind the relics the the meaning behind the the whys as to why you why you are here and what you're doing and people not wanting you to to know your truth not wanting you to know your history and the people that keep these truths why they're in danger but there's also which to me which is a, a greater part of this episode is what are you willing to to risk for the truth you know we have this guy george wilkins who may have been may or may not have been using these women in order to get deeper and closer to the truth potentially destroying lives but you know the woman that he hurt the most seemingly um uh, miss jackson the way her face changed when she talked about the book about the thing that had been passed on and and to understand the why as to why george wilkins was trying to dig this try and find this truth by any means even if it means throwing throwing away these relationships like to be able to forgive past transgressions for the for the for the bigger cause for the bigger picture right you know and and Juliet was ready to, you know, throw all of that away, the, the the search, the truth, all of that, because she felt some kind of way about not knowing somebody completely. You know, I thought that was kind of interesting. And we we saw that again with uh, her assistant deputy with, with Billings. You know, Billings is doing what he thinks is good work for the people and is absolutely doing good work for his family to keep them in a position, but hiding this truth that he has like this shaky hand and this debilitating whatever it is and we have to kind of do what you can in order to move forward and maybe even get over some things that may be a little uncomfortable in order to to think of the what the big picture is i think that may be a, a driving motivation for maybe comments character uh mr sims robert sims um as to why he's able to take these these big measures throwing people off staircases and 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 
living in secrecy in order to protect the bigger picture, which is whatever it takes to protect the people of the silo. We also got introduced to a name or the idea of a person who may be running the big show. And maybe it could be a couple people. They may not even be the same person. But Ms. Jackson was talking about somebody would sit down at her bed, recite everybody's name that she's affected. It made me, it made me initially think that it's uh, Mr. Sims, Common's character. But it could not be. It could be somebody at a higher level, you know, because they have access to all of this information. You have to threaten everything in order to keep a secret. And then they, they give, they mention yet another guy and the very end where we get a chance to see the sleeker monitors, the sleeker monitors, they didn't look like something that came from, um, you know, an Apple IIe Macintosh or whatever it was from back in, nine, nine, not in, the, in the early 80s. Like sleeker screens, crisper colors where it, it alludes that the technology is a lot higher and they are alluding to another man who needs to be need to be awakened. Are they one and the same person? Are they two totally different people? You know, we don't really, really know that. But we do know now us, at least the 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 viewers know that there is a more advanced organization that is keeping tabs, that is able to watch everything. And these, these people's paranoia, Ms. Jackson's paranoia, the other people with, with running the water makes their paranoia true that they are that they are being watched. Um, the only other thing that I can think of that maybe can tie in to the, who are who these other people may be, there's one loose end that we don't know a lot of history of, but he always seems to pop up, and that's the guy that's at the the at the top that swears he's coming to look at the stars or whatever it is. We don't know any history behind him. We don't know who he's working for. He's coming across as somebody that could be like a potential love interest, but I'm real skeptical. You know, he does seem curious. We don't know anything about that, and we've just been to, and we've just been told about two other additional men who have a high importance, and one guy who doesn't have any definition behind him. He may fit in one of those two slots. I don't know. That's that's just my theory. If I'm if I'm wearing like my tin hat, um, I am happy that we did get a chance to see a little bit of Billing's family. It grounds him a little bit. It makes us kind of root for him a little bit more. Uh, there's a really cool shot that I thought. Um, these are just my random thoughts. That I'm, I'm thinking of as I'm scrolling through some of this. Uh, there's a really cool shot uh, when we see uh, uh, Juliet and George sitting on like a, like the I beam that connects to the drill, and there's and they're over the void of the water, and the water and the sky look like one and two things. It's like this massive thing that that's that is a ton of mystery. We don't know what's underneath the water. Just like the people within the silo don't really know the significance of the sky and the and the dots in the sky and the lights in the sky. So it does make them feel makes them feel smaller in the grand scheme of a larger truth, just like the sky, if you're looking up at it and you've seen it in its full glory. I don't know if any of y'all have ever looked at the sky when there's no light pollution. If you've ever been privileged enough to look at the sky when there's zero light pollution on a moonless night, it's jarring. Like when your eyes really adjust it and you get a chance to see the expanse of just space, it can it can be unsettling if you've never seen it before it's, it, in its grandness and it's it's so beautiful. It's the same kind of feeling that some people have that have lived in landlocked states or landlocked countries and they get a chance to see the ocean for the first time. Like if you've talked to these people that have had these experiences, like they're they're moved and sometimes they're terrified or whatever it is because it's it's so large that you can't even like comprehend it. And I feel like that, like when they took these shot choices, like with them sitting on this I-beam and you see the, the this expanse of water behind him and you see the guy at the, at the top of the silo looking up at the stars, I, I feel like they kind of get it. Or maybe whoever it is that's, that's decided to make that shot or that scene, like they get it and to understand it. There's stuff, there's so much bigger. And then to reflect, to get back to the smaller things, we got a really good scene with, with Miss Walker, Martha Walker, who is, you know, the, the, the North star for me, for, for Juliet regarding like, keeping her on track, her Jiminy Cricket per se, or her Alfred, Batman's Alfred, you know, but she's lived, she's done big things in a very small space because of fear has not allowed her to live outside of that small space. So she's made the best out of what she's can. She's become a good person. But as she's gotten older and, you know, a lot of times older people live with regrets with choices that they've made because you always think that you have like this unlimited amount of time to just make changes or or not get stuck in your rut or whatever it is. And she's and she has this moment where I think she realizes that she 
she has lived a life that 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 is a little small it could have been grander if she was you know brave enough to go outside of her out of, outside of her front door so you can't like think small and to me that's what i took from it like the importance of time which is like hitting the nail right on the head uh, regarding what she's talking about but also the importance of of be bigger go outside of your comfort zone leave your leave your workshop for her and for and the advice that she may be giving juliet is to to just think of the big picture don't think about if george wilkins was the perfect boyfriend or whatever it is you know you went to there to solve it with a good heart because love led you to to find this truth for a bigger thing don't let hate or fear for her you know narrow you back into a point that you can't you know live discover become something better these tones are so great and there's also like a space of forgiveness that that you get a chance to see with the two women with miss jackson and juliet as well jackson gets it like her fear is based in a very real thing that the people that she loves can can be hurt but there's also you know there's there's some, there's some spite that's going to go along with that too because you know she loved a man who saw a bigger thing and then and used her potentially in, in order to to achieve the the big thing but there's a bit of forgiveness between these two women who have been wronged potentially wrong we still don't know the full story and and sharing that and be like this man did this horrible thing to me and used me but let me show you what the grand thing is and she hands over which is like the holy grail of the silo such such great i just i just really appreciate the writing not being overly subtle with what these grand gestures can be um uh, I get yeah you know I'm gonna go ahead and end it right there because I could just keep rattling on and on about it I got just it's all of these questions and I'm hoping to hear some of the questions and comments and everything else well that you leave uh down below let me uh let me know what I got right uh what I got wrong and um what I missed now when I say what I missed what I missed in terms of what the episode is right now please 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 no spoilers, because we don't want to ruin what I think is going to be a very intriguing ending of the season. Uh, thank you so much for your time, and I will catch you all on the next episode. All right, peace.